In 2005, the National Film and Sound Archive of Australia identified two films made by Frères Lumière representative Marius Sestier in 1896. Although these important films were made in Australia, they were not represented in the archive's collection. After these films were acquired, the NFSA undertook a great deal of research into Marius Sestier and his time in Australia, India and France. Marius Sestier's descendants were contacted in France and as part of this project the family visited Canberra in March 2010, bringing with them Sestier's original documents and photographs of his travels. The NFSA conserved, scanned and preserved the documents and photographs, many of which dated back to the late 1800s. The documents are destined to be translated in preparation for further research leading to the publication of a book about Sestier and the earliest days of cinema in Australia. As part of the preservation process, these documents required extensive restoration so that they could be scanned and digitally preserved. The first time I heard about these Sestier collections, I was worried about their conditions, uh, especially because I have to um, digitise every page and these materials are well over 100 years old. Um, once the items arrived, I was quite surprised how good they looked. Um, of course, you'll find normal problems such as fragile spines, uh, discolorations, uh, fragile newspaper clippings, fingerprints, stains, but um, overall their condition was excellent. One item, however, had a quite interesting problem. Uh, the two of, uh, two of the page was um, torn off completely. Um, in order for us to be able to um, digitize entire content, we needed to reattach the torn page with the rest of, of its page together. And in order to do so, we had to be able to do it in a way that uh, none of the texts are covered and also the texts are aligned perfectly on both sides. In order to do any mending in paper conservations, first you have to test the solubility of every pigment on, on the page. So I went um, and I, I tried water first. I tried um, water on ink and also water on the blue and red lines of the page. And I found them to be quite insoluble, which is good news. Then I picked um, Japanese tissue paper that is closer in color and weight to, to the original paper. Then I use methyl cell um, to adhere the Japanese paper. Japanese paper is commonly used in paper conservations because of its um, strength and also um, it's quite lightweight and has an excellent um, durability. The entire procedure was quite lengthy, but in the end I was quite happy with the outcome and we were able to um, digitize the page quite nicely. Working on the Sestier collection was quite a challenge, with a large number of different material types requiring digitisation. The Sestier collection consists of photographs, autochrome glass plates, diaries and journals, all requiring careful handling and item-specific digital processing. The journals, one of the items that I worked on, are extremely fragile and contain newspaper clippings that have been glued in place and in some cases are folded in to fit the journal. We felt that normal flatbed scanning was not the best method to digitise these items as the book binding was very fragile and may not withstand being flattened against the scanner's glass platen. Instead we decided to use our photographic copy stand setup and digital camera. This allowed us to obtain good quality digital copies of the pages with very little stress put on the actual items. We can also visually check the quality of our digital files as we work on the journals via the computer monitor and software that we use. Primarily in my involvement with the Sestier project was digitising photographs of Mario Sestier and his family and doing frame blow-ups from the Lumiere films. 
When scanning frame grabs from the Lumiere films, film services marked the frames to be digitised. I then wound the film to the marked frame location and scanned six to eight frames at the highest quality resolution. This became my preservation master file. From the file, I then chose the best image and cropped six to eight frames down to one image. I then colour corrected the image to the original image quality. Apart from this, the film was left relatively untouched. This was a really amazing project to work on. The Sestier footage is some of the oldest, the oldest film footage to have been shot in Australia, which made it historically just um, phenomenal. And it was really enjoyable to look at the footage, to handle the footage, and to look at the beautiful photographs of this family. One of the highlights of the project was the visit by the Sestier family members from France to the NFSA. This gave us a chance to demonstrate what we do here and discuss how we handled, cared for and digitised their amazing collection. A part of this ongoing project will be the preservation of the original format Frère Lumière films held in the NFSA's collection. These films came into the National Collection in 1993 and their provenance leads back to Marius Sestier and the first years of cinema in Australia. Before being preserved, the Lumiere films will undergo a rigorous repair process. This is a time-consuming procedure that is necessary to ensure that the film will survive the pressures of copying. Due to fragility, some films may only survive one run through the copying process. Therefore, the repair work needs to be of the highest quality. I suppose the most challenging thing about dealing with the Lumiere material is it has um, non-standard perforations or the holes that drive the film through the printer or the projector. Um, instead of having four perforations either side of the frame, it just has two circular ones either side of that frame. So it's quite really, really quite unusual to look at and quite difficult to deal with as well. The main thing is we have to repair that film in a way that it will go through the printer, um, not be damaged and not cause any damage that is completely irreparable. Uh, these films also have problems uh, like very high shrinkage of the film that occurs over age because these films are late 1800s um, and also they can be quite brittle as well. You can touch them and sometimes they will actually crumble so you have to have the utmost care and just very gentle handling, um, just so we do no damage when we're trying to copy the material. Once the Lumiere film is repaired, it will be put through the printing process. Printing involves making a copy of the original film on a new piece of film. The original copy will be returned to the NFSA's world-class preservation facility to extend its lifespan as long as possible. The Flair Lumiere format is a non-standard 35mm film gauge which became obsolete by the early 1900s. This makes preservation work difficult as special tools need to be built and standard equipment needs to be modified to copy and preserve the film. The task of constructing specialised equipment to accommodate rare film formats is not unusual for the National Film and Sound Archive of Australia. However, adapting film copying equipment to run the unique Lumiere format has never been done before in Australia. In fact, only a small number of institutions in the world have done so successfully. To run the film through a printer, the transport mechanism or gate has been modified to accept Lumiere or what is more commonly known as single perforation film. What I'm doing at the moment is um, building a uh, modified uh, gate to carry Lumiere single perf film. It will um, allow us to single frame print uh, a very rare bit of footage that I wouldn't be able to do anywhere else. The Nelson Hordell printer is the one we'll use to uh, copy this film. It's um, been already modified in this workshop for uh, 8 mil standard 8 9.5. It, it will do a wet gate 16 mil 35 mil and it's a good platform for, to copy the rare formats. The problem came up that we had to transport it through the Nielsen Hordell in a very accurate manner. So it would be done single frame at a time, but it has to be machined up very accurately. So I use Feature Cam, which is a CAD Cam program. Uh, I draw up the, the gate, uh, the components of the gate, 
That then converts the, uh, the CAD program to a CAM program. The CAM program uh, will talk to this machine and I'm able to machine up very intricate parts uh, in a timely fashion. This is a, a Haas CNC milling machine that we have here. The problem with uh, standard milling machines is uh, they, they, you can do a lot of the work, but with this CNC, I can, whatever I draw, I can, I can machine and in, a, in a fashion that we can, in a, in a matter of a week, um, build up a gate that we can transport uh, rare footage through a printer. So with this, with this equipment and the, um, the sections that we have here, we can all work together to build equipment to transport all the rare footage that we carry in the archive. Once this process has been tested and refined, the printed film will be photochemically preserved. The result will be a copy of the film that can be either projected in theatres or transferred to video or digital format to be viewed by a wider audience. It is through the skill and ingenuity of its staff that the National Film and Sound Archive of Australia is able to conserve and preserve Australia's film history. The use of innovative methods such as these ensures that invaluable historical insights into Australia's culture will be available for future generations to study and enjoy.